Amplifiers, then, can be thought of devices that take an input voltage or an input current, some sort of input signal. In this case, let's just refer to an input voltage. And in some way amplify it, producing an output voltage. We can model that operation in terms of a dependent source, a source at an output that is dependent upon some input signal. In this case, we've got an input voltage, V sub i, referenced across some modeled input resistance. And then at the output, we have this dependent voltage source with an open circuit gain AV0 so that the voltage source has the value of AV0 times this input voltage. And then there's an output resistance associated with this to model the reality of all circuits that when current flows, voltage um, drops. There's no such thing as resistanceless conductors. This is referred to as the open circuit model of the amplifier. In this case, it's a voltage out and a voltage in, or so this is ref what we would refer to as a voltage amplifier. We'll see in the next video that there's a number of different types of amplifiers depending upon how you define your output and input signals. But using this open circuit voltage amplifier model, we can then connect a signal to it V sub S with its corresponding Thevenin resistance, driving the input, and then connect a load to be driven by the output of the amplifier. So this load represents the rest of the circuit downstream that will be using this amplified signal. With this overall model then, we can see how the effects of the, or see the effects of the source resistance and the load resistance in series with the output resistance affects the overall circuit gain. So here at the input, we've got the input resistance with V in, the quantity to, be amp quantity to be amplified, V in is the voltage across R in. R in is in series with the source resistance, and so we have a voltage divider here, where V in is equal to V sub S, the signal voltage, times R in divided by R sub S plus R in. And similarly, the output, the output voltage V out is equal to the open circuit voltage AV0 times V in times the voltage divider R sub L over R sub L plus R out. Now we want to be able to talk about the overall gain. The output, and we'll call it A, is the ratio of the output voltage to the signal voltage. So to form that then, we have V out over V in, but V in is equal to this. So let's now rewrite this. V out is equal to the open loop gain term AV0 times V in, but V in is just V sub S times R in over R sub S plus R in. So that's V in, then times this voltage divider at the output times R sub L over R sub L plus R0. With these two voltage dividers taken into account then, we can now form this gain term, the overall gain, which is equal to, again, V out divided by the signal voltage V sub S, and that is equal to the open circuit gain multiplied by the voltage divider term at the input, R in over R sub S plus R in, multiplied by the voltage to get by by the voltage divider gain at the output, R sub L over R sub L plus R zero. And once again, this is called the overall gain. And we can never get the actual open circuit gain all the way to the output because of this voltage divider relationship. But by looking at this, we can come up with or we can deduce some ideal values for both R in and R sub L. Because of the voltage divider, we would like to have, in order to get as large a percentage of V sub S as possible, we'd like to have R sub I be much larger than R sub S. So ideally, R sub I will be much larger than 
R sub S, so that the greater percentage of the signal will be dropped across the input resistance instead of over the source resistance. On the other hand, we would like R sub L to be much greater than the output resistance of the resistor, or we would like R out to be much less than R sub L, so that once again, the significant portion of this open circuit voltage here ends up across the load and not being dropped across or out.